Hi friends, it's Pastor Eric, and it's time for Pastor's Questions. I encourage you, if you haven't yet, to open your scriptures to Romans 16, and to take a quick look at the sermon I preached just yesterday. It's posted online for you on our YouTube page. Having heard that sermon, these questions will make sense. But if you hear the questions before you hear the sermon, it's going to kind of not make any sense at all. So having, I'm assuming that you've heard the sermon, you've got the passage open in front of you. Let's walk through these questions together. One, what surprised you about this week's reading? Besides how short it is, what surprised you about this week's reading? Two, for what reason did Paul mention some of the occupations of the people listed here? Now, I gave my, my explanation, but I want you to think about it, and I want you to add something to what I said. For what reason did Paul mention some of the occupations of the people listed here? Three, number three. Did the early church come entirely from the poor and the lowly? I want you to list the names in chapter 16 that sound as if they might have come from the upper classes. I want you to start in verse 1. I'm pretty sure Phoebe was part of the upper classes. And there's a number listed there. Read them slowly and remember your ancient history classes, and you might find some surprises. Four. How should the church use archaeology? Have you ever thought about that? Well, that's the kind of thing that I think about when you've got a big archaeological story here staring you in the face. Think of it. If archaeological discoveries don't confirm the Scripture, how might the church respond? And I can tell you that's happened before. Or, if archaeological discoveries seem to confirm what Scripture teaches, does that make the Scripture true? Or was Scripture true long before archaeologists discovered anything? My last question there under number four is this. How is archaeology as a science, as a field of study, similar to investing in one's streets? Five. This is an awkward question. I'm going to ask it anyway. How do you feel about rich Christians? Let's just say that you admire that they follow Jesus and that they're rich. Why do you admire this combination of traits? If you admit that you suspect rich Christians of not being fervent Christians enough, then why? How might we sanctify our thoughts and feelings about rich Christians? At last, what makes for wealth, at least in the eyes of the Scripture? And for some help on that, I encourage you to kind of flip back through the entire book of Romans. Or, if that's too long, just go to Psalm 49. The psalmist is quite direct. Six. Six. How do you feel about your town or your city? Well, you, you hear the name, and how do you feel inside? How about the city of Philadelphia? When did you start feeling this way? And how does the gospel of Jesus inform how you engage with your town or city? Now, be careful with this one. I'm not asking you to share with your pilgrim group or your household all the things you do to serve your city or your town. That's not the point. The point is I'm looking for how the gospel motivates you outward, including in the face of all kinds of put-downs, misunderstandings, uh, folks who suspect you because you're religious. Think of that angle on it, not all the things that you might be doing. And seven... No, seven. There you go. Seven. Why might Protestant Christians over the past 200 years emphasize the sharing of the gospel over investing in one city? It's true. We have. What might happen if all we did as Jesus' followers was to invest in our city? 
and what might it look like to both share the gospel of grace and invest in the city? Well, that's all for our questions this week. Remember, I haven't said everything about our passage. There's so much I'm sure that I've missed. Discuss these things together. Enjoy the scriptures. They are God's word to us. And reach out to me if you've got questions that I might be able to answer. Thanks.